Last time on the 30 for 30, we worked on the cabbage mancha, and that is by far the hardest move I've ever tried. And it's funny because at first I thought it looked simple, but man, I was wrong. But it was a great experience. I got to practice it. I got to work with Nixus Seba as well. And even got to 1v1 the guy in a Cabbage Mantra only 1v1, which was a lot of fun. Great guy. Much respect. But we got to keep moving forward, baby. We got to keep this going. The 30 for 30, if you don't know, 30 minutes every day for 30 days. Trying to show that frequency can learn moves over volume. I mean, of course, volume can help, but I'm just saying, if you're in a rush, what can you learn? If you've only got 30 minutes every day, what can you do? Well, after the poor performance last time, I wanted to try something different, maybe something some would consider a little bit easier, and Sheps has been suggesting this for weeks and weeks. He's been suggesting the 180 degree wave dash flick. Now, if you don't know who Sheps is, Sheps is going to be the guy I'm going to be referring to in this video. He's going to be the guy helping me. He's got this stuff down. Not only that, this guy loves freestyling. He's a long-time grand champion. He's the manager for Team Decay and Team Tenshi. You know, really great guy, great player. And he's also one of the guys who's involved in Rocket League Battle Cards. So, the first thing I decided to do before even talking to Sheps was I was going to go and learn a little myself. Try and figure this out myself. And some guides would say in that you just had to get the front corner of the car down and front flip. So, you'd wave dash. Sort of how you'd wave dash. You'd tilt your car into the corner and then do a front flip. And that seemed inconsistent to me. Other guides were saying to just air roll to the side, then do a front flip cancellation. So, that made more sense. I tried it a few times. Seemed more consistent. So, that was week one. We're just going to keep drilling and drilling the front flip cancellation. And at first, I actually naturally kept wave dashing to the side. It was really difficult to just do a front flip cancellation. It took a lot of concentration to almost erase that muscle memory in week one. Week two, it was finally time to get the ball on the car and to give it a blast. And guess what? I was defaulting again to wave dashing to the side. So I'd get the ball on my car. I'd air roll to the right, which was what I found comfortable. And instead of doing a front flip cancellation to try and get under the ball ready for the back flip flick, I would just wave dash to the opposite side. So in this case, to the left. This was a real big problem. It took me a long, long time to get out of the habit of doing this. After a whole week, I was finally starting to get out of the habit and figured that now is the time to finally get this move polished up week three still yet to land one i was struggling to get the ball on the right part of the car i kept hitting the ball away or off to the side so i had to speak with sheps to figure out where it was and he said you want it on the top of the car almost actually going off the back if you can and you don't want to boost so much on the initial jump so there we go we got to work and now it was starting to click. Now I was starting to land them, but I wasn't proud of what I was landing. I wanted something crazy. I wanted something insane. Here we go then, stepping in to week number four, and I'm going to go against the guy that had the idea, the guy that's been teaching me through this. I'm going against the Sheps in a 1v1, 180 degree flick only. Um, and we're actually doing a best of one here, just to make it even more intense. Very fast paced game, but will we land the 180 degree backflip flick? That is the big question. Sheps looking good. And uh, just so you know, I am in the orange Fennec and uh, Sheps is in the blue Octane. As you can probably tell just by the skill, <laughs> as he's actually able to get under the ball very consistently and get some high flicks. Uh, we were allowed to save them. And the reason I like to do that is because it makes it extra realistic. The net isn't going to be closed in a real game, so you actually have to be able to make those shots to prove the effectiveness of the move. And I think throughout this, you know, this has been my big problem, is putting the ball in the right spot. And there it is, Sheps gets the winning goal. We actually went into overtime. It's been a tough journey. This is one I actually thought was going to be really, really easy. I actually thought this was going to be the easiest one by a mile. I almost got a bit too cocky early on in the first week. thought I was just going to fly through this. But it wasn't until the third week that I actually started to hit anything of merit. And even that wasn't particularly great. I would have got saved in a real game. So a little bit of a short one really is the skill just wasn't there for me with this move. I want to give a big thank you to the patrons having coaching sessions to support their gameplay. Trenton, Dream Crusher, Callum, and Mika. Yeah, and as I say, you know, short one today, very short for a, a 30 for 30, but it just wasn't vibing with me. No matter how much I practiced this move, I didn't actually improve. So there wasn't many updates on this. 
and I was speaking to a couple of people and I think their idea was kind of cool to do a mechanical and a functional one. So the next 30 for 30 will be five 1v1s every single day to see how much the rank increases. And then after that, going back to a mechanical 30 for 30. Again, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Do appreciate it. Look after yourselves. Have a nice life and peace. Peace.